our first session is Engagement and Impact, a conversation with students, presented by Tynan Gable, who is the Social Impact Strategist at International Futures with Every Learner Everywhere, Tia Holliday, who is the Post-Secondary Lead at Intentional Futures with Every Learner Everywhere, and a panel of student fellows, including Christina Tucker, Kiara Williams, and Destiny Adams. Welcome, everybody. My name is Mark Lenneman, and I go to Georgia State University. Hi, my name is Asia Amorales, and I attend Valencia College. Hi, I'm Christina Tucker, and I go to Oregon State University. Hi, I'm Krista Elrod. I am a student at Georgia State University. My name is Kiara, and I go to Georgia State University in Atlanta. Hi, I'm Kimberly Brosso, and I go to Kennesaw State University. Hi, my name is Jonathan, and I go to the University of Mississippi. How can instructors make their lessons more engaging? We learn best by bringing our own experiences to the table and, um, you know, learning lessons from the past allows us to understand the present. So always making sure that um, the material relates to us in some manner is very important. Most of the time, when you think of teaching, um, you you um go you go to class, you um watch the lectures, and then you go back to your dorm, and then do and do the homework, and then um get ready for the exams. I think that's that's a way that needs to um change. I think it's very important that uh, professors come up with um activities in class that can help students interact with um with um, um each other. Every student needs a why, and if your why is just I want these credits to you know complete my major pathway or whatever, you know, students are going to try. They want good grades, but they're not going to be as engaged as they would have. They're just going to solely aim for good grades. And that doesn't always equate to learning the material. So if you bring in the why and you try to sit down with them, and it's a lot harder in a larger class, but at least get a sense of why they're taking this course. Is it towards a major? Is it just an elective? Is it you might be interested, but you don't know? And then try to figure out what their long-term goals are you can better craft it and explain the relevance and to their futures. And I think if you explain why it might be relevant in this job or, uh, you know, just to branch out and things like that, it might make it a little easier. So instructors can make their lessons more engaging and relevant to students' lives um, by first and foremost, getting to know their students. Um, this can be done many different ways. I've had instructors do discussion threads where students introduce themselves. Um, I've had instructors do videos to introduce yourself. Um, I've also seen um, surveys done as well. So basically making lessons more relevant and engaging to each individual student will come first and foremost by getting to know your student. I think being in college, um, we are kind of kind of changing from being kids to um, adult. So I think it's very important that um, um, professors um, 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 create life example. Like, for example, um, in psychology, um, you might um, know ways that can help students lower their stress level. So we can have like a, like a day where like, instead of um, having lectures, you actually go outside and then um, sit somewhere and then like teach students how to lower their stress level. Um, the same can be done in math. Um, you know that those students are gonna be doing their taxes in the future. Um, you could go outside and then um, teach them about taxes, teach them about um, um, rent um, and stuff like that. Finding out who we are as people, our backgrounds. I know instructors already have a lot on their plate, but we also have a lot on our plate as well. And we end up, I feel like there's a lot of times where we get only snippets of who our instructors are and only snippets of who our students are, our fellow students are, and we're only allowed to give snippets of who we are. But this is a community and we all could benefit from finding a community atmosphere in our in our classrooms so that we can engage with what we're learning more readily and openly. What instructor practices have made a positive impact on you and your learning? I appreciate when professors show that they truly care. And again, I understand it's hard in 
a large classroom to check up on every student and they probably have multiple classes. So I don't necessarily even expect an individualized email, although some professors have gone the extra mile and done that. And I really appreciate that. But I appreciate when they check up on us and say, hey guys, is my course load too much? Do you have too much going on in other classes and you might need an extension? Um, I try to keep that philosophy, be someone that you would wanna work with. Um, and so of course you wanna work with someone that's considering, that's understanding, uh, someone that still gets their work done. So I still wanna be taught what I'm learning in the class, but someone that understands that my life isn't necessarily revolving around this one class. So I do appreciate when they send those emails for mental health check-ins um, or just feedback on the course and try to understand where they're not connecting with students so that they can do better instead of putting the blame on students. Just to give me actual feedback on my assignments instead of saying good work or you hit all the points that I asked in the rubric and, but actually like making me feel heard. Um, making sure that they respond to something in my essay. And even if it's a critique, um, it's so important to say like, hey, like, I see you took the time to do this and I appreciate that you did take the time to do this. Um, and that's how they can be more responsive to students' needs. It's, um, you know, as a student, at least for myself, like you take the time to do a good job and it's really hard when someone just replies with, good job or more information needed. Um, so I would say like, make your responses personal. That's what really matters. I think that I appreciate when instructors get to know me. I appreciate when they are recognizing of the fact that I'm disabled, that I have bad days, that life throws a lot of challenges your way. I've had teachers who have really worked with me and helped me try to find the best educational atmosphere. And I have maintained relationships with them after school because of how much they've impacted me and how much their hard work towards guaranteeing that I can do the best I can always it sticks, it sticks. Um, I know in my personal experience, it just went as far as an instructor knowing my name personally. Um, I know that instructors have also kind of reached out to the whole class and just asked questions like, what are your learning styles? How do you study the best? Um, what are some things that you feel that I as an instructor can do better to help you? Um, which kind of goes into some advice on how instructors can kind of help students' needs and be more responsive to them as well. So it's really just communication, engaging, really getting to know your students and asking how you as an instructor can best support that student. And this can be done in a discussion thread, in a survey, in an email, whatever works best. I've seen it all types of ways, but that's really some good ways to just get started in that positive direction. Um, something that schools don't realize is that students come from different backgrounds and they interpret inf inf information differently and then everyone is different. So I think it's very important for um, teachers to um, teach in a way that's very level where like everyone can actually understand what's what's going on. Well, like they will, like, they will not be confused um, of the um, instruction. And if you see that there is a student um, failing reach out to that student and, and and then actually talk to that student and see what's going on and maybe you can um help them get back on their feet um you're not only gonna have an impact for that term you you're gonna impact the students for the rest of their life because you actually cared and reached out to that student just recognizing that we all have different experiences and different challenges, uh, poverty, and the reality of what this pandemic is doing really affects uh, sometimes how quickly or how readily or able we are to do things. And we as students put a lot of time and effort into this education, plus money. A lot of us are going super into debt. Uh, whenever a teacher can be understanding of how much we are putting up to get this education and work with us to help us maintain our educational goals is 
the main thing that any instructor can do to help. To respond to them, have a one-on-one, -on -one, encourage them that they can do it. It's not impossible. What is an example of a positive digital learning experience that you've had? I can recall vividly that one semester I had the best online class. It was a Spanish class. It was oral communication in Spanish. I was kind of nervous about it being fully online, but that was probably the most engaging and fun class I ever had. Um, my professor utilized a platform called Flipgrid. Um, it, you can have an app on your phone and it's on the computer. And so I really did see my classmates face to face a lot because it was video based. Um, and basically he made it fun by, you know, watching mu music videos in the Spanish culture. Um, we had to watch like a Netflix TV series fully in Spanish and reflect on it also in Spanish. It was just really fun because music connects people. Um, TV shows can also connect people. So I remember that class. I will never forget it. That professor was absolutely the best. Talk about a fun and engaging class. Um, yeah, that was totally awesome. And Flipgrid is also really cool. A time when my online experience was actually um, positive and was something that I really appreciated was when my professor took into account that um, we are um, learning our, our course during COVID. So being able to accommodate and being able to be um, reasonable and then also being able to be understanding when I do have situations where I just don't understand a certain concept, my professor being able to them um, take the time out of their day to be able to create a separate meeting for me or to be able to have separate times to explain information was great. And then also being able to have sometimes having just an extension just because they knew that under a situation at home that there's a lot going on that whether it's family or whether it was our health or anything like that so always being able to be understanding. My most recent semester I would say is a really positive digital learning experience um, at least with one course for uh, my foreign language Chinese class. Uh, my Chinese teacher was super super available. She made sure because of the type of stuff we were learning that we had weekly meetings and in those weekly meetings like she made sure to talk to all of us uh she wanted to see all of our faces so we got a really positive experience because even though if, like all my other classes felt so disconnected this one didn't and my grade reflected it most of the positive digital learning experiences I've had with instructors have been where the instructor has uh, a group meeting or a class meeting online and it's live. I've gotten the most out of meeting live only because the, you know, I have a chance to respond to the instructor if they ask a question or if I have problems. Whereas through email or, you know, a lot of universities use some kind of D2L desire to learn, um, takes time to get a response. And sometimes us students don't have so much time to get those uh, responses back and, and figure out what we need to do. What are the instructor do's and don'ts that make your digital learning experience great? I think actually listen to, um, to um, students and um, see where they are coming from, and understand and understand them, and understand that they are not used to that type of environment, and that this that they are not like technicians, where like they should know how to fix issues. Um, one of the main thing was um, when I missed something, or like when I like when like my computer was um, acting up, and then. I miss an um, assignment and the fact that when I emailed my teachers and they didn't really understand why I missed the um, assignment and I didn't have an opportunity to to um to um, actually redo that um, assignment. I think that was one of the major um 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 bad things about online learning and and those things affected my grades a lot. And secondly, um, it's like when a test was was um, proctored, when when I would have trouble with my computer getting my camera to work, getting the app to work on my on my computer, and teachers would not understand where like where I was coming from. Honestly, there has been a couple things that have not worked for me in a digital learning environment. 
One of them is the lack of face-to-face -face, um, just at all in a class. Um, not seeing my classmates can really take a toll on somebody, especially because it might make you feel just alone in your learning environment. Another one is the lack of communication between like you and your professor or you and classmates. Um, that can make you feel like you're struggling by yourself as well. Um, so honestly, some things that could have made that experience better was at least having some type of synchronous aspect or face-to-face -face component to the class um, instead of professors just giving you the software and kind of hiding for the semester. So there's a couple of things that could be considered to make those experiences better. Um, and one of them would definitely be fostering that community feel in one way or another, whether it be by discussion, group chats, some type of face-to-face -face video aspect, just something to make them feel just together and not alone in a digital learning environment. Trust feels lacking in the digital environment. And I would like to see that mitigated or changed. I noticed like one of my major things is how invasive and stressful proctored testing is. Some of my classes have been really stressful because it's a gotta get this done. If you don't get this done, it's your fault. You just spent a whole bunch of money. This is affecting your GPA. Um, and we're living through a crazy time. We are trying our best. One of the things that hasn't worked well for me in a digital learning environment is uh, non-engagement with the instructor. Um, so this would mean that the instructor posts, our professor posts a bunch of assignments, uh, basically walks us through it via recorded videos. And um, if we have any questions, it's very hard to ask those questions through email system or D2L. Um, so something that would help the experience of the student much better and help them to learn better would be more engagement with the student, whether it be uh, Zoom meetings um, or some other platform of the nature. In a digital environment, I still really appreciate when the professors are engaged. I have had a few instances where um, they've made us get a program, whatever it may be, and we've used it to do the modules or the lessons or whatever. And but then they simply input the grade at the end. And, you know, for a myriad of reasons, that isn't the best way to go, because sometimes it would want you to write a specific word like in Spanish, but my keyboard wouldn't have the accent mark. So it would mark all of these questions wrong, even though they weren't really wrong. Um, so that was really annoying having to send a bunch of emails saying, no, look, I, I got it right. Um, so although I think there is some uh, good things that can come out of using this digital courseware and help us practice and do practice tests. Um, I think it is good that if professors can go in and see where their students might be struggling, instead of just looking for the, the number on the end to put into the grade book, because at that point, it doesn't feel like I'm getting any teaching from my professor. Your life experience grants you the opportunity to delve more into a topic. And when we have to just go from a textbook or we have to just answer test questions. It takes the dimension of learning away and it focuses more on just the, the thought of like, yes or no, mark an X instead of, hey, like you're a human being and this is what you can add. And um, I think that's what can make it better is, is making sure that the assignments are engaging and relevant to our lives. You've just heard from some of the students participating in the inaugural cohort of the Every Learner Everywhere Fellowship Program. To learn more about the program, you can visit our website at everylearnereverywhere.org or email Tynan Ortia of Intentional Futures. That concludes our presentation for today, and we are now happy to answer any questions. So we do have time for some Q&A, so feel free, again, there's a Q&A tab over on the left that you can use. Uh, but I will just start with a couple questions that came through, and then you all can kind of take it where you want to take it from there. So for any of the students that are with us, there was a lot of theme in there about connection and building community and building relationships. What advice can you give when students just don't really respond or interact with faculty members or instructors? Um, I'll ahead, answer yeah. this one. I think if 
um, students aren't reaching out for engagement, like they probably don't want the engagement or they're not sure how mm -hmm. to um, like reach out back to you in a way that they feel comfortable. So I would just say like daily announcements, like I'm here for you or any suggestions, like really make it open, but also have different modes where they can reach you through email or um, setting up like a Zoom meeting or something like that. But I would also say if um, like there's certain classes I've taken where I didn't need feedback from the teacher, I was fine. It wasn't, it was more like an elective that I needed, but other classes um, I did need. So, I mean, I would almost say focus on the students that are saying like, hey, I need your help. But I would just also say like, make those daily like announcements, however it works for your individual schools and just let them know that you're there for them constantly mm -hmm. just so they know. I would, I would definitely kind of piggyback off of that. Like there's only so much you can do, of course. Like there's only so much reaching out you know, emails you can send. Um, the students that really care, I mean, you'll see it. If someone's not responding, you don't know what they're going through, of course. So I wouldn't say give up on them per se, but after a certain point, I mean, of like no lack of response, then you'll kind of know that they really might not care, um, but it's, it's far and few in between. So don't give up, um, just really emphasize that human aspect. Like if there's anything I can do to support you, I'm here and just don't fail to make that known. Great, so just that consistent and constant, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I love that. Um, let me see, one of these I feel like was related. I'm curious about, well, I'm not, someone is curious about, <laughs> um, do you ever feel like your instructors provide too much feedback? Uh, and actually I am curious about this because I've gotten feedback like this too. So maybe we give notes and comments and other materials and other things. Does it ever get to be too much or is like the more the merrier? How does it feel? I don't think I've ever received too much feedback. Um, okay. I, I, I don't think I've ever received excess. No, I like seeing what people have to say, um, especially if I know it will just help foster my development like moving forward. Um, but I don't think I've ever had an educational experience where someone said like just way too much in response to an assignment. I will agree with her. For me, um, when I'm given extra like um, feedback or even like further reading, I jump right on it. Like I'm really interested in my learning. I really want to be a part of the experience of what, you know, I'm learning. So if someone gives me extra things to look at, I'm always ready and willing for it and, and, and appreciative of that, the fact that they did that. Cool. <laughs> okay. I oh, think yes. there's me. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. So I was going to say, um, Actually, I really enjoy when I get feedback because it just helps me, especially when I spend a lot of time on a certain assignment. It's like I would just like the feedback instead of just, you know, the grade by itself. So I'm always open to feedback and especially when it comes from peers as well. Perfect. Yeah. More peer feedback. That's an interesting one, too. And I think as a follow up to the feedback question um, and one of your peers in the video mentioned how feedback is better than just the grade, kind of like you just said. Um, but how does a faculty member balance helpful, meaningful feedback, but not being like overly negative? Because I know I've gotten feedback sometimes that my feedback can come off when it's asynchronous and I'm not face to face with the person. It can feel like, oh, that was kind of a mean comment. And I'm like, no, I didn't mean it to be that way. Um, but what is that? What is the what is the best feedback look like for you all if you enjoy feedback? I haven't seen much negative feedback. Like I, I think a lot of people know, for the most part, how to respectfully. Like that's a part of just being a professional is just respectfully giving feedback. That constructive criticism aspect. I can't really sit here and say that I received like a super harsh, destroying <laughs> piece of just feedback when it comes to like any of my classes. But I mean, it's just simple how do you speak to humans like you're not gonna put a bunch of like sad faces when it comes to like responding to someone's work um it's just interaction etiquette at that point it's what what you're saying is if you know it's going to be helpful you can sit back and say like how would it be perceived from another point of view but 
it, it's kind of rare unless you're just a kind of mean human being it's it's pretty rare to leave like some harsh words for somebody be nice that's the general rule of thumb <laughs> i had i had an experience um in a consciousness class for psychology which obviously you're going to get different viewpoints because it's consciousness um and you know it's still being studied um and we had to take a, a certain side it had to be yes or no and so i took the certain side and i thought i defended my argument great and so the thing that i liked is my professor was like hey like i saw what you wrote i could see exactly what you were trying to say but this is how i perceive it and and so as he was telling me where my argument was wrong he was also interweaving certain parts of what i had written into his response to say like you were almost there with this answer you were almost there with like this viewpoint and and so when i read it i was like oh man like i didn't get i didn't get the point of what i was supposed to get but he helped guide me to understand where some of my answers weren't far enough or they stopped short and then he also showed me like hey i like your viewpoint and and you you also taught me something that i hadn't seen before about this certain subject mm -hmm. so i think that um as long as you're always including like the students uh you know paper or some of their words or like you know even if it was math like their methodology when you're saying like hey this isn't quite right but showing them that you took the time to actually see it hopefully the student is going to be more open because just like kiara said like we're professionals we're trying to like have this back and forth in that professional arena so we also have to be open to feedback like we also have to be open to the fact that maybe we didn't get it right um but just doing it in that compassionate sort of way like where the student knows that their voice or their paper or whatever it was that they were doing um was actually like integrated into the response great thank you that was awesome um so we are we have about a minute left so i just want to give um tynan or tia space if people have further questions or do you all have anything you kind of want to end the panel with before we before we close out? Um, there are a lot of questions that are themed around uh, how to kind of adapt your approach to different students and make sure that you're meeting each student's needs. And I would love for one or all of the, the fellows on the call to speak to that. Like how can, how can faculty make sure that they're meeting the needs of each individual student? And what are some ways that, like really tangible ways that faculty can be really available for students that might have different different needs for what availability looks like or communication looks like. Yeah, have about 45 seconds. So yeah, if anyone has a thought, it'd yeah. be great. You have to reach out to them first, definitely. Um, you gotta learn what these different needs are. Um, but Destiny, go ahead. Okay, I was just gonna say the same thing, staying connected to students and really um, just let them know that you're available and you're open to talking, you know, um, really putting your office hours up. And then if you can't just make yourself available, you know, make sure you have like teacher assistants or a uh, peer group set up, just other options so that it just doesn't feel like the student is left out in the cold so that they have connections to other, you know, resources. And I would say I in, instead of focusing on every student's needs, because every student's different and how, how can one person meet all the student's needs, make sure that you're available. Just let everyone in the class know like you're available. And then that way, those that need it come to you instead of you trying to figure out who needs help and, and um, that, that would be overwhelming. So just make sure you're open and available. Very cool, yeah. So we are out of time. Um, that was really good. I just wanna first of all acknowledge how cool it is to have students with us in this space. So thank you all for being here. Uh, but thanks to Tynan, Tia, Christina. I have dogs, sorry, working from home. Uh, Kiara and Destiny 